very good evening friends meeting after a big gap uh not possible to conduct the sessions because lack of assistance was there and use opd so after a big gap we'll going to learn again the philosophy robert's philosophy with new chapter the chapter number 18 i think so the separation so we have finished the last chapter the susceptibility he has make it made it clear that you must go with sequence so that you can understand and apply the things in practice and that's why he has explained it in a in such a manner so last time we have finished the susceptibility the concept of susceptibility susceptibility how it is responsible to produce acute disorder as well as chronic disorder and how if you give a right remedy uh, in a proper dose how this susceptibility can be matched with the help of medicine all those aspects which we have learned on that day prakrit today we will going to learn with new chapter separation from hro so open your books and start with chapter number 18 the separation in the dissertations on vital energy we pointed out that it was this force which was the expression of life itself and through its power of development and control in itself and by itself it maintains the harmonious working the state of equilibrium which is perfect health so in the first sentence only he explains what is the role of vital force and role of vital force is always the preservation of health and maintenance of health so it tries to make the balance it tries to make the balance between mind body and soul and it tries to man- maintain that that is very important there are external forces which may have an impress upon vital energy it that allow it to work in undisturbed harmony and there are external forces that have great influence in inhibiting its normal function there are a number of forces which acts on this vital force right from your birth or even before that right from your birth in the womb and <clears throat> all the forces external forces starts acting on your vital force the balance between the mind and body it tries to maintain it tries to preserve the health so there are many inhibiting factors n number of things are there in your life which which inhibits you to do a certain thing still it tries to maintain balance you want to do certain thing but your parent says no inhibiting factor still you temporarily you get disturbed you get nervous you get depressed but again your vital force brings back you again in the state of health it never immediately gets support and you remains in the state of health there are n number of factors which acts on you so there are external forces which may have an impress upon vital energy eight that allow it to work in, in the undisturbed harmony and there are external forces that have great influence in inhibiting its normal function when the normal function is inhibited the immediate reaction is the lack of harmony and a warped and suppressed functioning vital force so that disease conditions are produced with attendant symptoms and irregular functions of the body but sometimes the external force is so strong it affects your vital principle vital force if it affects so strongly that vital force itself is not able to react not able to cope up it and it itself get disturbed so when the vital force itself gets suppressed it its action gets inhibited then the harmony between mind body and soul gets disturbed the equilibrium is disturbed and it starts reflecting in the form of some signs and symptoms these external manifestations of disturbed vital energy we label by the name of disease in the form of signs and symptoms so signs and symptoms because becomes the language of the internal derangement of this vital force that is actual disease and reflection is in the totality of the symptom so this is simple way with which we can understand the concept 
let us consider some of the these external features that have thus suppressed the normal functions of the vital force and through the vital force the normal functioning of the body such conditions as shell shock fright fear excessive joy intense unsatisfied longing for mate or offspring unrequited love grief from loss of family or friends business apprehensions and worries disappointed ambitions extreme fatigue and exhaustion so he has given multiple examples where the vital force can get inhibited or disturbed there are a number of things some worry long lasting worry some some fright acute fright sometimes it might be a business stress sometimes it may may be a stress between because of quarrels bit at the house in number of factors which acts on you because you have emotions because you have your own logic because you have your intellect because you have your understanding and because of all those things you have your own identity or ego and if it gets hurt if it gets disturbed because of all the such types of external factors your vital force goes into into the disease state if it remains then it starts expressing all these forces have an influence upon the vital energy and so warp and suppress its natural functioning that a train of symptoms is produced train means sequence a train of symptoms is produced varying in their manifestations but each varying widely from the natural expressions of vital energy so whatever may be the cause expression is individualistic cause is same for three persons but all three expresses it in a different manner because everyone's vital energy everyone's vital force everyone's vital principle is different and that's why the reactions are individualistic and those one must know but each varying widely from from the natural expressions of vital energy we often see cases where these suppressing emotions not only affect profoundly the single individual but extend their influence to the next generation through the effect on the nursing mother so it is not just the reflection of disease remains over there in that individual if the lady is pregnant the same trauma can affect the vital force of that lady as well as the vital force of that unborn and that may affect that unborn infant also sometimes it might affect through the mother's milk and affect the child also because such effects are dynamic such impacts are dynamic and those are very potent if the person is susceptible enough then that impact can cause a damage and that can affect even their offspring also the palliative effect of medicines in the physiological form is a condition that we see over and over again and we can observe the sequence of suppressive action the result being first palliation and then suppression or, or an actual aggravation of the first condition there are always the primary and secondary actions as a result of as a result of physiological doses and we see it well expressed in paragraph 59 of the organon where hanemann says such palliative antipathic and remedies were never employed in allaying the prominent symptoms of protracted disease without being followed in a few hours by contrary conditions that is the return of the evil often seriously aggravated see how nicely he explains about those things he explains over there that if we consume the large doses or physiological doses for example a person who used to who is having the constipation and who consumes the purgative so purgative effect is there and he feels better immediately the patient can pass the stools till the action of that purgative is there his bowels gets evacuated and later on when the action vanishes the person again goes into the same state he again goes into the similar type of um, constipation in of a severe degree many times you have seen it in the person who are who become become dependent upon the sleeping pills if they don't take that sleeping pill at night they were 
completely aggravated they never get the sleep see this is very important there is always a palliation followed by aggravation this is the common rule when common rule whenever you try to suppress it by using the principle contraria contraria spirit and many times if you use the local measures it may pal show palliative effect but this is gets transferred from the very less important organ to the more vital organ and to which we label by the name of suppression palliation is just a temporary elevation of symptom where the disease still remains over there but if it, it goes from that place and if it enters inside if it affects the internal vital organ then definitely the suppression has occurred and that suppression can cause the damage so i have seen n number of suppression just now a case is going on of a cancer of uh, mouth with a secondary and a lot of metastasis with a fistula complete opening of the left um cheek and patient was already treated with surgery then chemotherapy and there was a recurrence and they came to me i took the history the whole case was there and the, it, then i understood that it has started one and half years back when he had developed an eczema which was expressed all over his body he went to the skin specialist then skin specialist have prescribed him some antibiotics then steroids then antihistaminics and local application of steroids again for that within span of 8 days everything vanished he was so happy that it it works so nicely then he started getting pain in his teeth then he went to dentist dentist has said that it has your teeth has been completely destructed you have to remove then he has removed that teeth uh, after removal that there was no healing then they again he again went to same dentist he said that uh, it might be because you have sugar or etc then check they checked everything nothing found then they took the biopsy and biopsy showed it is a cancer cancer then they again operated for it given chemo and everything and he was he there was a recurrence even after chemo then they came to me when i took the case i explained to them that this original a will will come again your eczema will return back but you will survive and your problem will be settled to start with treatment they agreed i have started treatment with the medicine <clears throat> within span of 2 3 months everything settled and whole body again suffered from the severe eczema so <clears throat> if this is so if it comes then question is that the theory which has been explained by hanema is very thorough then they ask me we have to go to the skin same skin specialist I ask them if you will go you will increase again your cancer if you don't if you let it go and it will appear for some time it will remain and then will vanish they never understood thing they again went to the skin specialist again there was a the recurrence of cancer so this 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 happens the disease goes from less important organ to the vital organ that is what is called as suppression and this is quite common with the physiological doses this is quite common with the material doses and this is what he is explaining over there the paragraph continues that is what the hanemans paragraph he says the paragraph continues speaking of the use of opm in suppressing cough and the use of same drug in diarrhea on and copy and producing exhalation and other physiological primary effects in common practice then he goes on to show the secondary effects as being but the, an aggravation of the first condition and an entirely different group of symptoms of deeper significance so if you try to suppress many things with opium cough a dry cough and person takes opium they feels better immediate relief for some time they are happy after some time they again started getting cough and now it is earlier it was dry now it is material there is some expectoration and it goes on and goes on he started losing the weight evening rise of fever and they again investigate it and now they label now you have tuberculosis so this is how this has shifted 
it has started with functional and ended with the structural then because because of separation this is what he wants to explain the homeopathic physician constantly comes across drug effects in physiological form which have suppressed the natural expression of disease the one thing we should always bear in mind and should hold as our aim is to allow the vital process to express itself in its own chosen way when it is deranged it is only when it shows itself clearly and without interruption in its natural development that we get a clear picture of this state and administration of physiological medicine at such time changes the whole picture suppressing one symptom after another until there is no expression of true condition of the patient the immediate effect of this method of treatment is suppression but if persistent persisted in and continued over a period of time it has the effect of driving the vital energy to express itself in one in some other form and usually in a deeper and more vital way this is what we commonly see in our practice very commonly in fact that patient comes to us with such types of suppression the disease has expressed at some external most layer in the form of some eruption and patient goes to the skin specialist they apply some local treatment and immediately patient starts getting some epileptic problem some asthmatic problem some rheumatic trouble sometimes some renal failures etc many varieties of cases you can get the internal expression depends upon every individual it is not one and same for each and every individual it depends upon their vital principle it depends upon their myism it depends upon their constitution so it depends upon their susceptibility and they need to so it is not one and same for each each and every it varies but when it trans gets transport from the less important organ to the very vital organ to which we label by the name of separation and this is very common in our day to day practice in homeopathy we see these separations of and on in fact i tell my student that skin specialist they are the big factories for the homeopathic students you must practice homeopathy you have ample cases the immediate effect of this method of treatment is suppression but if persisted in and continued over a period of time it has effect on of driving the vital energy to express itself in some or other form usually in deeper and more vital organ as an illustration consider the use of opium and its derivatives of suppression of cups if this treatment is continued for any length of time instead of cough we find patient has become subject to a condition far more serious for he has developed a chronic state of night cough and each time it is suppressed it is driven still deeper and the patient soon develops fever night sweats and general hectic condition this may happen in simple coughs it may happen in pneumonic coughs the danger of this separation is very great as can easily be noticed especially in pneumonia where the least separation is often fatal so he he has explained same example which i have already explained so simple cough gets converted into the structural cough in the form of pneumonia tubercular pneumonia or some malignancy so this is transmission of disease from very simple functional manifestation to a deeper structural manifestation and this this is called as a disease which is difficult to cure then he says likewise in diarrhea the suppression of diarrhea will often produce constipation then the fever and tendency to delirium one who remembers the time when cholera infantum was so prevalent will remember also that many children who had received opium to stop the diarrhea which it promptly did developed the next day of hydrocephalic state and succumbed to the ravages of opium rather than to the ravages of disease the present in discrimination discriminate use of salicylates and coal tar derivatives in rheumatic and allied states invariably sends the trouble of the central organs especially to the heart and this we see very commonly in our practice we treat diarrhea with certain opium derivative patient feels better and then patient goes into the very dangerous state quite common very very n number of times these things happens the disorder goes from less important organ to the more vital organ and these things produces more danger to the human see 
20 30 years back there were very less diabetic patients hypertensive patients thyroid prevalence endocrine disorders autoimmune disorders and see today what is the condition every house you will going to get these cases the diabetes the hypertensive the endocrine disorders the autoimmune they are increased to a vast number why this is happening it is becoming be, becoming complicated because of physiological doses the simple manifestations we try to mm, suppress many times it happens that patient has symptoms such as headache or sometimes some feverish state and you go to the medical stores you get the medicines and you try to mm, palliate that with that but after long time palliation it always gets converted into a structural internal disorder and it goes from less important organ to the more vital so this is the this is how it runs this creates the problem this creates very difficult state and this is what is happening at present so my suggestion to all of you understand what the patient's disease language will the totality of symptoms find it out that totality match it with the your medicine and give that it is so simple technique apply of applying the law of symptoms instead of putting certain local measures over there giving physiological doses and producing more damage to the human body so suppression is nothing but transformation of disease from less important organ to more important organ because of such physiological doses what he says in next paragraph is very important the present day advertising of proprietary articles for the relief of pain such as aspirin and the consequent indiscriminate use of such preparations is extremely exceedingly harmful for it suppresses once more the danger signal of pain and it always can cover the condition but never remove it rendering it possible to appear in a much exaggerated and more dangerous manifestation in some or other organs or in much more serious condition in the same organ so this this is what happens when we treat the disorders in such a manner it goes from less important organ to more important organ organ and affecting the tissue in the same organ the structure structural damage can happen or it may reflect in another organ there was just a case for 10 days back there was suppressed skin eruption eczema and patient it has entered into the liver producing liver pathology so it goes from less important organ to the more important organ in such a manner and which creates the problem and that's why one must understand this concept of suppression one more paragraph will finish anath So my copy. Hello. Hello. Are you getting my voice? Are you getting my voice? 
okay what we'll do we'll continue with the same last paragraph tomorrow again tomorrow session we'll continue with the same paragraph today we'll conclude there was some problem uh, with the connection so we'll continue with it tomorrow and today evening we'll meet again at 8:15 with new remedy from third year syllabus that is murex and this last paragraph we'll going to learn it in tomorrow session okay is it okay thank you very much sir okay yes sir good evening and we'll meet at it have a good evening